Mariners on Cairo TV and Cairo News Radio 71. Now, Linda Coldiron and Gary Spinell Sports. This is Cairo Weekend Eyewitness News. Good evening. She's a former model, but she'll never work again. Her face savagely scarred the legacy of a knife attack by her own husband. In the first of a two-part series, Lee Carter introduces us to a woman who's been battered by her husband and the system. My son, when it happened, some children at school were teasing him. Your daddy stabbed your mama. You know, so he punched three boys out. 30-year-old Gina Alzheimer is a battered wife. The last time it happened, she had to be airlifted to Harborview after being stabbed several times by her husband. They had to remove a rib. The lung was, uh, it collapsed and it was injured very badly. Ernest Alzheimer is wanted for attempted murder because of the latest attack on his wife. 75% of all black women in the United States have been affected by domestic or, or sexual violence. Billy Avery is head of the National Black Women's Health Organization. She's in Seattle talking to mostly African women about domestic violence, something Gina Alzheimer has experienced on too many occasions. You know, he had knocked my tooth out, I had concussion, my eye, I had blood clot in my eye, my eye was blood clot for, th for four months. And I says, how can you tell me you love me and you want me and you could beat me like this? And in front of the children. We are seeking counseling because my son has seen Arnett beat me at least five times. And he would think that, uh, you know, I don't want him to think that's the proper way to do, you know, to treat a woman. The counselor is Tom Tolson, who says that domestic violence teaches boys that that's the way to solve problems and teaches girls that they should stay in their place. So it uh, has a very detrimental effect on, on children. Yeah. That was the other message these women received during the domestic violence conference today. Also, the conference participants heard that African women are less likely to report physical abuse. That's because of their ingrown suspicion of the white power structure and because of economic considerations, as we will see and hear in part two of this report. Lee Carter, Cairo Eyewitness News. Franklin County Sheriff's deputies have resumed their search for the bodies of migrant farm workers who may have been murder victims in 1976. Investigators say the bodies were dumped in irrigation drains 10 years ago. They do have a suspect whom they will not name, but nobody is in custody at this time. Investigators first dug for those bodies last summer. The current search is part of a two-year investigation in cooperation with the state attorney general's office. The search is centered on drains in the Basin City area. The King County Medical Examiner says a young woman whose body was found yesterday in Seattle Seward Park died from a blow to the head. Her body was found yesterday morning in some bushes by a man and his son who were walking through the park. The woman, believed to be 15 to 20 years old, hasn't been identified. Seattle homicide detectives have ruled out any connection to the string of serial killings attributed to the Green River Killer. In another homicide case, the medical examiner says 25-year-old George Andrew Wright Jr. of Renton died from a blow to the head by a blunt instrument and a stab wound to his back. Wright's body was found near a North Bend logging road this past Thursday. While President Reagan pushes his plan to give military aid to the Nicaraguan Contras, opponents to that aid banded together in Seattle today to make their feelings known. Several hundred people gathered at Victor Steinberg Park near the Pike Place Market for a rally against Contra aid. Some 23 groups were represented at the rally. They heard speakers tell them the current Nicaraguan government is fair and democratic, and the people of Nicaragua are happy. If we talk about whether the Sandinistas have support or not, of course they do. Everybody has a gun, and everybody knows how to use it. And that's why the contrast will never get through. No matter if it's 100 million, or 200, or 1 billion, no pasarán. No pasarán means they will not get through, no matter what. Tomorrow, President Reagan will speak to the nation about the situation in Nicaragua. You can see the president's speech live here on Cairo at 5 o'clock. Members of Plowshares International got together at the University of Washington today to talk about peace and reminisce about their good old Peace Corps days. It's the second annual Plowshares conference held in Seattle. Plowshares members are all former Peace Corps volunteers. The Peace Corps celebrates its 25th anniversary this year, and today's conference featured a slow-scan TV phone hookup with Sergeant Shriver, the first boss of the Corps. But the conference wasn't convened just to recall the good old days. 
with this particular uh, conference that we're focusing on is educating ourselves, the relation between what is the nuclear arms race and the competition between the U.S. and the Soviet Union and what impact that may have on where we spend a lot of time as volunteers in the third world. Mott says there'll be a Peace Corps reunion in Washington, D.C. in September. The term hands across the sea took on a whole new meaning today as those hands moved figures on a chessboard. It was a chess game between students at Lakeside Middle School in Seattle and students in the Soviet Union. The moves were transmitted from one country to another by computer. Well, this is actually a rematch of a similar match last year. In that competition, the Soviet students won or tied all but one game. The chess games foster understanding along with sportsmanship last year. One Soviet youngster used his computer to ask if his American opponent could send him a Big Mac. When we come back, a special report will review Poison Prevention Week, and we'll stroll around Green Lake with some mothers. I love your truck. Shucks, huh? Uh-huh. Bet you got this on sale. Their new truck department, huh? <laughs> I love your truck. Save $20 on truck bed mats by Rubber Queen. Indestructible and guaranteed for the life of your truck. The top-rated Spectrum 2 radar detector, warns on both X and K bands, is now only $299.99. Thanks, Chuck. They say the whole idea stinks. So a group of Seattle residents decided to fight the idea of putting a sewage treatment plant in the Interbay area between Magnolia and Queen Anne Hill. Members of the group called Citizens to Save Interbay met today to talk about strategy. They say a sewage plant in their neighborhood would be smelly, noisy, and ugly. They're afraid the plant might be railroaded through with no money spent to landscape or cover the plant or make it more bearable. If we have to assume that plant, we believe that in good faith they should spend that money. And everybody from the mayor to the city council and other officials will not give us that guarantee. So we have good reason, I think, to be reluctant and resistant. After the meeting, group members collected flyers that will be distributed to residents of Queen Anne and Magnolia. Plant opponents say as many as 20,000 people would be affected by a sewage plant at Inner Bay. Seattle's younger set was also out today gathering support for their favorite cause. The little ones and their parents were part of the March of Dimes Buggy Brigade to fight birth defects. Parents and children were sponsored by people wishing to give the March of Dimes. The kids either walked or were rolled along a three-kilometer course around Green Lake, all the time earning money. Now, this wasn't a race. The strollers were just strolling. And at the finish line, there was a big picnic lunch. The Buggy Brigade is a preliminary event before next month. Walk America, the March of Dimes annual 30-kilometer walk to raise money to stop birth defects. Children also in the forefront of another campaign, Poison Prevention. Now, to kick off the start of upcoming Poison Prevention Week, youngsters from 48 King and Snohomish County Schools took part in a Mr. Yuck poster contest. Mr. Yuck, of course, the now familiar warning symbol. Officials hope you'll stick on all your household poisons that might be in your kitchen or your bathroom. Today, the winners of that competition were honored today at Children's Orthopedic Hospital. There were three winners each in the third, fourth, and fifth grade divisions, plus several honorable mentions. One poster pointed out that poison spoils your appetite. But the poster didn't seem to bother the youngsters' appetites as everybody dug into cake and punch after the ceremonies. Well, when he suggested minorities and women should get a break in jobs to make up for past injustices and to offer role models for younger people, our commentator Lou Guzzo go to the letter writers into action. Mention affirmative action and equality for women and the sparks fly. Richard Lee of Seattle responded to a commentary this way. You have apparently seen fit to support racism and sexism as practiced by affirmative action programs using the bankrupt logic of ends justifying the means. Such unfair, discriminatory, and perverted logic is foreign and abhorrent to this country's traditional ethics, values, and laws. Apparently, even the city has no confidence in the legality of its affirmative action programs. Having recently settled out of court, a lawsuit by eight firefighters over such discriminatory hiring practices. Jack Weichels of Edmonds wrote this. You suggested folks should hire minorities over white folks because of past injustices to minorities. If I'm flying in an airliner 
I would sure hope the pilot and co-pilot were the best qualified guys the company could hire, regardless of color. Even if I hired a plumber or electrician to work on my house, I would hope that that guy has the skills of his trade and not merely holding a job because his great-great-grandpa was a slave to someone else's great-great-grandpa. But Charles Franklin of Seattle disagreed. You hit the nail right on the head. If black teens had good role models and parents who were able to get good jobs and have the opportunity to get a good college education, the teens would see that they themselves could make it in this society and wouldn't mind putting forth the effort. Thanks for writing. I'm Lou Guzzo. No controversy here. Just Gary Spinell in sports and b-ball, lots of b-ball. Basketball, basketball, and more basketball. <laughs> we have three different sports today. Basketball, basketball, and basketball. And we'll talk about basketball when we come back. I love your truck. Shucks, huh? Uh-huh. Bet you got this on sale. Their new truck department, huh? <laughs> I love your truck. Save $20 and improve your visibility and ventilation with an easy-to-install pass-through window from Superior. Now just $29.99. And durable diamond tread Superior running boards are just $49.99. Thanks, Chuck. The emerging popularity of Valley I-5's Blue Water Coastal Cruisers has created an entirely new class of boat in the 42 to 54 foot range. Coastal Cruisers combine sleek contemporary styling and high performance. They offer a low center of gravity, shallow drafts, and protected running gear. And Coastal Cruisers provide the extra spacious comfort and greater livability that more and more of today's boating enthusiasts demand. Blue Water Coastal Cruisers, made in the USA and sold exclusively by Valley I-5 in Kent. Very hot. Definitely hot. Dempsey and Makepeace. Dempsey and Makepeace, Saturday at 7 on Cairo TV. Gary wasn't kidding. I was looking at his script. That is about all you have there. That's it, yeah. Basketball. You know, a there's a little baseball going. going on. A little baseball. There's no football. There's the golf tournament got rained out today. So, hey, we're talking basketball. All week long it's been basketball. So here's more today. Certainly no exception. We'll start with the local high school basketball tournament. All across the state, the teams gather, and right here, boys action, Mountain View, and Ferris Woolsey puts Mountain View ahead. Ferris comes right back with Mark Wheeler's two for them. Mountain View comes back with a pair. Johnny Shepard has the bucket right here, and Ferris comes back as 52 Harvey Cobbs misses, but the shot is put back by Roger Hamlet, and here you have the final score. It's Mountain View 54 and Ferris 52, third and fifth decided. Now the game you see on top there is the AAA game. That'll start at 9 o'clock tonight. It is Curtis and Garfield. Should be a dandy. We'll have highlights at 11. John Garrison Hoop wins it today for Walla Walla over Cascade. Check that. Cascade over Walla Walla, 57 to 56. And fourth and sixth are decided there. The boys' double-A tournament. Mark Morris will play Olympia at 7 o'clock. And Shorewood took third spot. And West Valley, fifth spot today. In overtime, Mark Nelson's winning hoop did that one. And Linwood is on top. Hale, 69 to 56. Now, double-A girls action. We had that over at the arena today. Chief South and Woodway got together. A couple of points coming up here for South as they go on to beat Woodway by a 63-40 count. South thus takes third in the tournament, while Woodway takes the fifth spot. Let's check all the girls action today. Juanita and Port Angeles will play tonight in the arena for the triple-A girls title. Here are the others. Puyallup, a loser to Franklin today. Franklin will take third, and Puyallup, 53, they will take fifth. It was Garfield, 58, and Federal Way, 50. The double-A girls game will start at 9 tonight. Hart Hanford, that is, in Colville, that at 9 o'clock. And South had no trouble with Woodway, as we reported, 63-40. The other game, Lake Stevens, gets by Lakeside, and fourth and sixth decided in that one, 57-49. to You see the final score. As we switch to the NCAA tournament, the most exciting game of the day, was LSU's upset win over 12th rank Memphis State. Now here's what happened. Game is tied, 81-81 as we pick it up. The clock is running out. LSU's Don Redden has the ball. Watch him shoot. He misses right there. The scramble is on. And watch, look at the clock. Two, one, look at Redden. And the boys come up with the ball. That's Anthony Wilson fires it up. And LSU wins it 83-81. And yes, the Tiger coach Dale Brown was a mighty happy man after. 